most people in life look for how to make a life worth living and retire worth having. In America, thankfully today, we still have within the major part of the Midwest a sense of personal safety. We have people who believe that American life is worth fighting for. We have people who believe that when you do the right thing, most other people also do the right thing. At the same time, we have very smart-ass 20-something to 30-something people who like to participate in mobbing, stalking, human trafficking, and sexually inappropriate touch games. I can tell you this because since my arrival in a community in which my intent was to start over because of its applauded, allegedly, and lauded, supposedly, concept of diversity, that has not been the least bit of case that I have experienced. Every time last year and through the year when I went to make retail and business contacts, someone pilfered my business cards and interfered with relationships. Every moment of time was impacted that I invested in trying to develop things for my program. Since moving away from the campus, my body has become a little bit safer, but there are still monstrous people in a community who walk around with their affluentiality and lie about people in poverty, not recognizing that people come to poverty not always by their own means. Cybercrime and identity theft is on the rise. Fraud is something that teenagers and 20-somethings and almost 30-somethings commit all the time. We have communities that are teaching technology skills, which is marvelous for those who are underprivileged. But it is not wise if those students are not taught the ethics, morals, and laws of our nation. Most people would be very upset if the photographs of their loved ones were never given back by a law enforcement officer. Most people would be fairly annoyed to find that their property had been sold out from underneath them in a sheriff's sale without any lawful notice about it. Most people would be really furious with elderly siblings or anyone who's related by blood to them for pretending that they are in charge of contracts that don't belong to them. When a person moves back to a community after job loss, downturn in economy, and then solicits people like me in businesses to help them produce results, and we invest hours at a time not only revitalizing their presentation, but actually helping to fill the room every time, it's sort of sad that those individuals don't remember what they were doing at the time. Probably they were going through a rough time. They were living back at home with their children and their parents. Not a good time. I've had to suffer through that in my own lifetime where siblings came home and did that. But at the one hand, it was sort of made supper hour more fun. On the other hand, it gave a lot of stress to my parents. And thankfully at the time, my mother was spry enough to handle a toddler. But in lifetime, we have our moments of time when we move on, we mature and we do things differently so that our life doesn't resemble that of our family of birth. A man who recognizes good quality words and good quality education, good quality books, is going to produce in his company, in his life, work within a lesser hours of week than he might have started out after college. You see, everyone has a different hot button of what's important to them. Some people want quality time in with others. Other people want property from others. And even others are just looking for the vanity and the prettiness of how it looks to others in the publicity of their life. When I'm talking about these things, I'm not talking about the loss of a significant partner in my life after 20 years of lawfully betrothal capabilities. 
if I talk about it this way, I'm enabling myself to be heard by different types of couples. Because under American law, we have common law marriage, we have international marriage, we have domesticated marriage, we also have live-in type of situations, and openly that's almost a common law. I mean, look what Tom Cruise did with Nicole Kidman in year nine. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. That if you're not able to produce a life for yourself, then your job is to seek education, information, and any sort of publication you can of how you can learn something new and move on as best as you can. But when you participate in the theft of someone's personal intimate property from their bags of which they're carrying with them as they're traveling, as they're going through struggle, as they might be impoverished, or they might be homeless because of lies that have been placed on their life, you literally are the most immoral person on the planet no matter what you think of your own life. Your lie is seen by the Lord Most High. Your vulgarness and your vanity and your violence towards someone else's life is being observed by the angels that are around us that you no longer believe in. It's amazing how many rightist Christians will walk up and piss all over me with Bible verses and then palm me a paltry two dollars that I've tried to reject several times. <clears throat> because frankly it's just not enough money for me you're trying to give somebody two bucks which is a kindness in your mind but what you should have done was say hey you look like you're in struggle is there anything that I can do or a friend of mine could do to help you move forward in your life there's a lot of pastors that like to walk through a community like what happened to me almost five minutes after I received some complimentary food from a lovely gal who worked at a Panda Express who knew that I was taking her up on a rain check. But the problem was that those three people talking at me were able to move about around me and the later thing that I found was my property went missing. Or was it that my property went missing because someone watched me go through it and decided to steal it? The items that were stolen were very important to me. One was an actually federally protected list 